Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. Thus far in this series we've discussed the cause of insulin resistance and methods for reversing and curing type 2 diabetes. But sometimes even after one begins to fast or eat LCHF, there can be elevated blood sugar levels first thing in the morning. Even if postprandial numbers are good, oftentimes the overnight fasting glucose level is high. And even if you're on a long fast, this elevated glucose is occurring in the morning. So what the hell is going on? Well, that all has to do with what's happening in your body overnight as you sleep. There are two possible causes for elevated fasting glucose levels in the morning. The first is known as the Somoji effect also known as reactive hypoglycemia. It's often seen in type 2 diabetic patients, and it's caused by a drop in blood sugar due to a nighttime dose of medication. The drop in blood sugar is severe and dangerous, so the body compensates by increasing blood glucose. Since the individual is asleep, they don't notice the symptoms typical of hypoglycemia, such as shakiness and confusion. However, once he or she wakes up, they register elevated glucose without a good explanation. To determine if this is the case, then blood glucose can be checked between 2 and 3 a.m. for several consecutive nights. And if glucose levels are very low, then it is diagnostic of the Somoji effect. The second possible cause is known as the Dawn effect or Dawn phenomenon, DP. This phenomenon was first described about 30 years ago and is estimated to occur in up to 75% of individuals with T2D, be they treated or not. It's a result of the circadian rhythms discussed in my fasting series. Just before we wake up, our body releases what are known as counter-regulatory hormones, such as growth hormone, cortisol, adrenaline, and glucagon. Now that last one will be explored in depth in a future video, as I'm sure most of you have never heard of it. Well, these hormones counter the effects of insulin and cause glucose levels to rise. This is intentional by the body in order to prepare us for the coming day. The hormones aren't released in a huge rush, but pulse out in varying amounts with the highest amounts occurring early in the morning and becoming smaller throughout the day. This type of release is known as pulsatile. Now, these increasing levels of glucose are not out of control because insulin secretion also increases. This effect occurs in non-diabetic individuals as well, but the rise in glucose levels is so small that it's easily missed, unless, of course, you're specifically looking for the phenomenon. So as we eat through the day, that food is stored as glycogen and fat, and as we sleep, our bodies must release the energy, and especially in the early morning in order to energize us for the day. This is where the counter-regulatory hormones are released. But then, eventually, insulin is released to keep this increase in blood sugars from surging too high. That is what happens in a non-diabetic. It's the natural way of things. So, what happens if you're a type 2 diabetic or highly insulin resistant? Well, everything occurs the same, but when the insulin is secreted to slow down the increase in glucose, it has very little effect. To make this simpler to understand, think of the liver as a balloon. In a non-diabetic, the balloon is deflated. So as they eat and the food energy is converted to glycogen, it very easily fills the balloon. But for a type 2 diabetic, the balloon has been overfilled from years of insulin resistance. The liver is stuffed with fat and sugar. So once the dawn phenomenon begins, the body is instructed to release some glycogen. And because the balloon is overfilled, that sugar comes rushing out and completely overwhelms the impaired insulin attempting to stop it. After all, sugar is toxic and the liver wants it out of there. Interestingly enough, this same phenomenon occurs when fasting. The counter-regulatory hormones are secreted during fasting as well. And this, of course, signals the liver 
to release some glycogen as glucose and some fat as free fatty acids. This is natural and, of course, is the purpose of fasting. However, in a type 2 diabetic, there is way too much sugar in the liver, and so it ends up in the bloodstream where doctors can observe it. Is this bad? Well, no, not really. It's just the body moving the glucose out of the tissue where it is extremely harmful and into the blood where it is less harmful. But as we know, doctors consider this blood glucose to be very bad. But if you're not eating, aka fasting, then where is the blood glucose coming from? Well, obviously, your body. It's just being moved from the tissue to the blood. A completely neutral action as the total glucose level does not change. It's neither good nor bad. Prescribed insulin keeps the blood sugars bottled up inside the body tissues. But if you stop insulin altogether, then the sugars can come out of the tissue much too fast, just like the overinflated balloon. So insulin should be lowered gradually, enough to allow the release of the sugars at a more reasonable pace. Certain medications can also aid in this. So if you have normal blood sugars at all times except for the dawn phenomenon, then this indicates that the liver is still too full of sugar and fat. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong, just that more sugar and fat needs to be burned off from the liver. It's simply a sign that more work needs to be done before your diabetes is cleared. So before you get discouraged or feel like a failure, think about it this way. For years, your body has been stuffed full of excess sugar, mostly in the liver. Taking insulin for years on top of that has stuffed it even fuller. So naturally, your body is going to try to expel as much of that sugar as possible. And so, it ends up in your blood. This by itself is neither good nor bad. It's simply an indication that your body has too much sugar. Period. So, just stop putting sugar in by eating LCHF, burn the sugar off by fasting, or do both. Hopefully this has been helpful in understanding one of the more confusing aspects of type 2 diabetes. And that's it for this video. Stay tuned for more videos and be sure to subscribe to the channel to get them. Don't forget to click the bell so that you can be sure to get alerts when new videos upload. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Be A Loser Today. And if you like the videos in any of our series, then please hit the like button as it does help out the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.